We have been through some very interesting economic times lately, not just in the U.S., where there's talk of a possible recession, but globally as well. And with me to discuss in particular what's going on in Asia is Peter Chun, the founder and managing director of Silver Bear Capital. So welcome, Peter. Great to see you again in Hong Kong. Hi. Yeah. How are you? <laughs> um, so let, let's just start with how how is the U.S. economy being seen in Asia right now? Well, um, I think it has um, been navigated um, a, a lot with the U.S. market. And as you can see, um, there is a quite kind of like a situation going on in the market space. And as far as we saw, you know, although the U.S. stock market closed out May, mostly in change from where it began, um, a feed made it possible only due to a strong month end surge. Uh, as we roll into to June, the major US stock market index have all fruited with or scumbled to a bear market. So a bear market is generally considered to occur when the an index or an asset price has declined more than 20% from a recent high. Um, whether or not that the S&P 500 is in a bear market is mostly a matter of, I would say, semantics um, feeling. Or, or from from the streets. Um, on a closing basis, the, the Spanish market is down really a ninety percent from an all high, autumn high in an early January. But when intraday prices are considered, the index slump almost actually twenty one percent from what I'm seeing. So um, this has navigated um, the, the nation uh, perspective about the general. Uh, international um, economy perspective, and therefore um, Asia um, have no choice except to to um, go down the same journey. Yeah, I would say. Well, and it feels like some of this is global, and some of this is U.S. self inflicted as well. So, um, and and the, the worry I think here is not just this rapid decline we've seen in the stock market, but also how long is this going to last? This kind of malaise, like I'm hearing into 2024 by some people. I mean, do you think we're going to have to get used to kind of this slow growth area for a couple of years? Uh, probably so. But um, as you can see, um, we're now going forward. So I would say um, the, 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 the global economy obviously um, navigated strongly between uh, the US, China, and Europe as well. So um, leading from the US, and I was, I'm, I'm seeing all kinds of um, positive uh, uh, um, policies coming through, it's like you know, uh, the, the Fed do mandate requires the central bank to attempt to keep prices stable and maximum employment, and therefore um, this, um, they're, they're, they're dedicating to, to the balancing act, uh, so to speak. So um, in China, they're, they're fighting um, um, the COVID situation quite, quite, quite hard, um, trying to regain balance on 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 a, on a very large population consumer purchasing um, power that they can regenerate even for themselves without outside help. Now, if they successfully do. It, um, the, the Chinese market will resume uh, back to normal. And that is a powerful machine. As you can see in the past, they've been doing 5 or 6% like, like GDP um, return every single year, which is a good, very good number for, for actually a, a country starting from virtually nothing 30 years ago. So um, I would say um, there is an, enough brains uh, among all the kind of um, players in the field to to try to avoid um, what's so called a recession. Mm -hmm. So um, this time, I think um, there will be um, adjustments. But uh, whether a recession is coming or not coming, I think um, is really subject to how everybody will teamwork into into this global economy. Um, uh, situation because it's just not, I, I just don't see it as, as a singular uh, territory issues anymore. Yeah, no, it's definitely complicated. And speaking of bear markets, let's talk about crypto. Um, we've seen an extremely fast decline there. I mean, just some stunning, breathtaking drops. Uh, we seem to have stabilized. We're speaking on a June 21st. So it seems like we've stabilized a little bit over the past few days, but 
I was at a conference last week here in New York, the Battlefin Conference, and there were speakers on crypto and digital assets. Everybody there is in it for the long term. They believe this is a generational change. They're sticking with it. Um, I was at the registration yesterday for NFT.myc buzzing. 15,000 people are coming. There was a big dinner last night. I mean, nobody seems deterred by this drop and they're focusing on building the technology rather than, um, you know, the bear market that we've seen in crypto and kind of the fear about that. So I think that's very interesting. I mean, is that what you're seeing in Asia? It is actually. Um, and it's going to be very interesting to see how, how um, the Asian um, governments or regulatories are, are trying to allow and not allow um, crypto um, weather to, to dry up or not. Um, right now, we're kind of seeing a lot of the um, uh, past intervention by Chinese government to say, actually, even stop um, Bitcoin mining uh, or crypto mining in China at a certain point. Uh, there is um, a slight changes uh, unofficially, and I think it's due to um, whether the actual um, world uh, should embrace um, the, this new instrument uh, in the economy, uh, although um, so new that nobody is able to really put any, um, um, I would say, uh, proper legal policies around it to 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 actually let this instrument to help the economy rather than to disrupt the economy. <laughs> so. Um, I think that's basically why even um, the pricing of the crypto uh, had adjusted so quickly and um, and people are still trying to even uh, still trying to come up with new ideas, how they can actually um, fulfill um, using this new instruments into, into the new economy. Um, some actually are pretty useful um, because we have seen many uh, projects that are blockchain based mm -hmm. and it's actually um, helping uh, uh, the commercial uh, side of the industries uh, in, in, a, in a pretty proper way um, whereby obviously uh, nobody has been able to come up with the perfect formula for um, managing crypto. Um, I think um, Nobody uh, internationally right now would want to rule it out at the, at the moment. And interestingly, I was uh, reading some news, some high-end um, 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 brand name uh, apparel shops. Actually, New York is accepting Bitcoin as a payment. Um, the, uh, a very large international law firm in Canada is actually allowing crypto to be on their balance sheets. Right. And I think um, Switzerland, in fact, I just heard this yesterday, accepts crypto for tax payments. So um, there was some, somebody in Switzerland who does business. So I did not know that until yesterday. So there's like cases here and there of it kind of breaking through, but it, it's not sovereign. So I think that's why it's having so much trouble. Yeah. But I think in the end, um, my uh, perspective is basically is um, it's going to be more to, towards the regulated market. Mm -hmm. So um, I think um, it is going to be sensible for any um, regulatory or government to embrace uh, this new experiment. But I'm sure they will probably want it to framework it around so that there is a regulation um, policies around how you would actually properly say involved in a crypto situation going further. So I think the, 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 the ongoing, um, I would say, roadmap um, for crypto coming up. It's interesting times. So from your, from your point of view, and like we here in the US hear about, you know, the, the lockdowns in China and Shanghai for COVID, um, some of the crackdowns on the tech companies, which seem to be easing a little bit lately. How are you seeing investment in uh, China and Hong Kong right now? Uh, continually, um, I think there is a there is a new uh, fun kind of investment rotation format going on. So um, I think there's a lot more hedging uh, going on in between um, China and outside China, uh, which actually benefits 
both bodies. Um, that's the first thing that actually going on at the moment uh, in the background. And then I think the uh, the retail investors um, are trying to sit back a little bit and trying to, I would say, review the portfolio um, and to 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 see if they are buying. Uh, Although the right company, um, but are they buying at the right price? So there's a lot of market hunting going on, and I'm sure uh, a lot of the investors uh, on the retail level are balancing their 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 I would say um, investing uh, uh, average. Um, so just say they 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 were. They were going into like a tech company before at a higher price, and now I think they pick up more stock just to balance their um, their average. And um, uh, the, the the companies still stay strong. I mean, during COVID, there's a lot of tech companies that are still doing okay, um, and we're we're obviously still under COVID in Asia. And I think um, the economy as a whole, and even the population, all started to to um, get used to. Um, the, the 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 risk and and the um, I would say the living style of, of COVID so that helps the economy to to rebuild quickly because people are now adapted um, uh, uh, quickly uh, uh, about you know with, with this new situation of COVID yeah and then uh, finally um, do you think the Chinese government will double down on some recent policies in terms of zero COVID and some of the tech, or do you think that um, they've gone, okay, this didn't work so well for this economy you're trying to build and will change? What's your opinion? Uh, that's a very interesting question. Um, I would believe that they will go hybrid. So uh, one end of the stake, they would try to ease off their, their policy on, on COVID restrictions. Um, and the other end is they will still trying to put more defense around their um, kind of important, I would say, um, organs uh, in China. So, you know, they, they would want to make sure that if there are certain outbreaks, there is a protocol for them to not get hurt directly into their heart um, as such. So now they will, they will, they, then they will have this kind of an alternative uh, avenue streams whereby they are, they're opening the market, but actually even if they open like, and, and, and the outbreak of the COVID all suddenly just hit China very hard, um, they will not end up in the Shanghai situation just like recently. Because I mean, just one month of Shanghai lockdown causes the whole country two to three percent GDP. Okay. That's a very hard number. It's a very hard number, and and plus, you just wanted the long term effects of of a strict lockdown like that on people's moral and mental health. I mean, at least from Western yes. standards, we kind of you know we're going through that. So, Peter, it is so interesting to always talk to you about that because um, you're on the ground there in Asia and investing in Asia and, and, you know, really knowing what is going on. So it's always so interesting to hear your perspective. Thank you. Thank you. We'll talk soon.